Yeah, sorry to bother you, okay, but um, I'm liking this whole drink, and I have some few questions that I want to ask you. I mean, I've been moving around Rwanda, Kigali, but I've not really tasted anything natural like this. <laughs> yes, um, what's the name of this place again? Ikawa Cafe. Ikawa Cafe. Ikawa Cafe. Does it belong to a Rwandan? No. Oh, who does it belong to? It's an American. It's an American. Um, African American. Yeah, African American. Wow, black American. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> Beautiful. So, um, I don't know. My my aim of moving around. I'm. I, I've been traveling around Africa. You know, trying to bridge the gap between Africans and Africans in the diaspora. So, you telling me this place belongs to an African American? I wish I could talk to the owners. Are they around right now? Yeah, they are. Well, they are. Oh, them. Okay, so can I can I speak yes, to them? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing all right. Yeah. So, thank you. Welcome to the hour. Can I say, please, please? Okay. Good. Make yourself at home. Thank you. Thank you. This place was recommended to me by a friend, and I saw it on YouTube as well. And I was like, hey, since I'm in Kigali, sure. Let me give it a shot. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So I came here and I ordered this natural fruits looks like you juice. have a ginger pineapple lemonade ginger pineapple lemonade right. <laughs> wow. that's, a, that's, a, that's a good selection a good choice oh really yeah all right beautiful so i asked the lady um who owns this place mm. and then she was like brothers from another mother uh -huh. and i was like okay this is this is my this is what i've been trying to do mm. you know trying to bridge the gap between the africans in the motherland and Africans from the diaspora. Mm. So when it comes to Ghana, basically I speak to people who are moving to the motherland. Sure. And since I'm here, it would be nice to also speak to you since I w I've been told that this place belongs to my brothers and sisters. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'm loving this place already. Yeah. But then the thing is, Africa is big. Sure it is. Why Kigali? Why Kigali? Why not? <laughs> Why not Kigali? You wanna you wanna answer that? We actually thought about Ghana. Oh. So shout out to Ghana. Shout out. <laughs> of course. We thought uh -huh. about Ghana. We we actually studied Ghana first. Probably a good year yeah. well, before we actually made up our mind to uh expat to okay. expatriate. Right. Um but we, we did study Ghana, we studied Two other countries, mm -hmm. um, but Rhonda ticked all the boxes. Wow, Rhonda had exactly what we were looking for, mm -hmm. um, and then we have our mothers here and our daughters, two oh. our little girls with us. So we wanted to make sure that it had the elements that we needed mm -hmm. to provide their security as well. Yeah, okay. When did we get to realize there is Africa? Because I know when I speak to the diaspora, they were like, when I was in school, they didn't teach us about Africa. Right. It was just Africa as a continent. That was it. Right. When did you get to realize there is an Africa 
and you want to relate yourself to being an African? Well, for me, I had much the same mm -hmm. as the individual that shared that with you. That's that's more that's that's like a common common story for okay. most blacks, uh, Africans in America. Okay. That they don't in the public school systems or even in the private sector, especially in the private sector, probably mm -hmm. they don't really teach of the greatness of, of Africa, okay. the great rich history of Africa. Mm -hmm. And so, for myself, uh, can't even tell you how it how it occurred, but I took it upon myself to learn more of what Africa. And then when I say took it upon myself I was young okay I was in high school mm -hmm. and so uh, I came across information that just opened me up which which is learning that the great empires, mm -hmm. the Mali Sangha yeah. Empire the, the great and most uh, best university Timbuktu and yeah. the great uh, warriors and the, the great civilizations that mm -hmm. emanated from this continent yeah and so for me at a young age I was uh, always um, Connected, if you will. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't. I can't say because I was still immature okay. in my understanding. So I can't say that at that time I said, "Hey, I'm gonna go to Africa." Africa yeah. But I knew that even though I would, I was not there, and maybe not even thinking of being there, I mm -hmm. knew that I was connected. Okay. Wherever I was, I was connected. And so, fast forward, me becoming a student. Mm -hmm of the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, sure. he teaches us that we are original people. That there's no place on the earth that you cannot find us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So yeah. that really like, whoa, that opened me up even more to realize that our greatness is embedded in us, it's yeah. deep within us. And so I can go anywhere, mm -hmm. you know, but the root of it is right here. Right here. And so, um, that for me uh, was my connection or starting to think towards and then of course living in America and now being a grown adult and now seeing all of what is occurring and taking yeah. place it's time to check out <laughs> <laughs> time to check out it's time to check out yeah. you know because why why would why do we have to continue to subject ourselves to this mm -hmm. especially knowing that I'm an original man yeah original woman <laughs> you know I don't have to. I don't have to stay here. Mm -hmm. I can go anywhere on the face of the earth. Why not go back to where we started? Yeah, that's right. Beautiful. Yeah. I like that. You know, adding the religious part of of the movement sure. to it. Now the. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. Because a, a lot of uh, diasporas want to know. What do y'all know about us? Mm -hmm. Like, did you know that we were out there? Do you know how we got out there? I mean, I know you see uh, videos of us on entertainment, mm -hmm. sports, yeah. but did you guys know how we got out there? Me personally, when growing up, I'm from Cape Coast. Cape Coast is where mm -hmm. we have the Cape Coast Dungeon mm -hmm. and all that. So my school was closer to the Cape Coast Dungeon, wow. Philip Kwaku. That's the first school in Ghana. Mm. Wow. Yes. And me growing up, passing by the Cape Coast Dungeon all the time mm. and then seeing other people like me who don't speak like me you know it made me start thinking yeah. that why are these people talking differently mm. even though they are all black but they are they are different so through that I got to learn that they are part of us who are not with us in Africa right but out there moving forward um, studies taught me that there was slavery mm. so slavery whereby the white people sure. the Europeans sure. you know either forcefully or manipulated us yes. and sent us to their uh, land and made us work and that is the genesis of the African American or the African diaspora that's right, okay. that's right. so basically that is what I know what and that is what most Ghanaians also know. That's really? Yeah. Wow. So how do y'all feel about us coming, because most, most of the time when we're coming back to the continent, mm -hmm. Ghana's the first thought. Mm -hmm. um, that's where the ports were. Yeah. Um, most people could do a DNA check and they're going to see some kind of lineage in yeah. Ghana. Yeah. So everyone's first mind is 
go to Ghana. Ghana. But how do you guys, uh, how do y'all feel about us doing this, coming to Ghana, um, the black Americans, mm -hmm. ex, you know, coming over to the continent, mm -hmm. but in particular to Ghana, Ghana. how do y'all feel about that? Um, there are two part of Ghanaians. The layman who doesn't know anything about what an African American is. Mm. That local market woman sitting down there doesn't watch TV, didn't go to school. Mm. So she has no idea mm. what who is African American. And and when, when they see you per the conversation that you have, your language, they will say you are Obroni. Obroni. Yeah. Obroni That's means white. a white person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, so even because they right think now, they have money, like yes, Obrumi. and then your your language mm. and where you come from, mm. they will say you are Obroni. Mm. But some of us, like me, who have at least been through school, got my first degree, at least I know. <laughs> yes, <laughs> what degree did you get? Uh, basic education. All right. So I'm a teacher so by a profession. Teacher. I'm Very a teacher good. by profession oh, okay. for like the past 13 years. 13? Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> well, he look like he's about twenty. I'm thirty-five. Thirty-five. What? Yes. That's I that. look. I look young. That's you, that. You look, you're the oldest person on this continent. <laughs> in, this, in this country. That's his Africanness. Mm -hmm. You know, it's black. It's black cool. don't crack. Black yeah. don't crack. So yeah. I feel, I feel the, the vibe, of your movement to the mother. Sure. Sure. You know, I keep saying that. We get the information from the media, mm -hmm. and the media is letting us know what is going on with you. Mm -hmm. So your movement to some of us is deep. Mm -hmm. You need the freedom. Sure, yes. yes. There's been few times that I've had a dream. Sometimes there's this feeling when you sleep. It get to a time you feel like your soul is up. Mm -hmm. You want to get up, but the body can't get up. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever yeah, felt yeah, like yeah, that. Absolutely. A lot. When yes. I sleep on my back. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. So that feeling of you not being able to move your body, but you feel your soul is moving. Mm -hmm. That is how I feel about you. Mm. You were there. Where else can I go? I can't go anywhere. So then I still have to be in there. So when I see the movement, That's deep, right? I feel like, yo, I'm now up. Now the, the soul and the body is now working so yeah. I can move. Right. Those of us who are Christians, when it gets to that moment, you start mentioning Jesus, Jesus, because you, you need Jesus to, to help you get up from that feeling when you're asleep. I feel. Mm. So when you guys are coming out like that, some of us feel this is it. Now when you get a chance to move your body and come here, you're like, nobody sees you different. And that is how, to me, freedom and liberty is. That's beautiful, brother. So That's when, you, when I see you coming here, that is that is how I, I that is how I feel. That is why I've taken it upon myself to try and, and share the the exodus. Yeah. You know, let people know this is what is going on. Absolutely. So when you come, we have to find it a nice way to 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 take you in. I know it's difficult. The cultural differences, the you know, being angry at certain things. I've been with a lot of Honestly, with a lot of diasporas, yeah. I live with them. Yeah. All of them on my phone. A call. I needed to help me get a land, help me get this, help me get that. So, per what I've learned, I know how to deal with your movement sure. to this place. Sure, sure. In in relative to this, some people don't understand. Like you said, they think you have money. Mm. There are other hustlers like us in the in in the diaspora. Sure. Who would love to come but we would have to understand as africans if you are watching me from anywhere on the motherland in africa let's learn how to encourage you to come to stay Indeed. and to live with you Indeed. so that is the answer to the question that that's, you that's good that's probably for me that's probably the, the best answer that i've heard you know it means a lot too brother. yeah it means i a appreciate lot. that you know, it really means a lot because <clears throat> you know even even when having the desire and and acting on that desire of transitioning, mm -hmm. making that exodus, you don't really realize how conditioned mm -hmm. you are till you actually get separate and get away from it 
So the cultural differences really in, in truth are uh, are of uh, we as individuals trying to unlearn mm -hmm. the conditioning that has been put on us. So when you think about it, you know, as you were mentioning example, those the laymen that hear us speak in English mm -hmm. because they have in, 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 in a sense it makes sense. Yeah. Because we're not speaking the original language. language yeah. We're speaking the king's Colonization. Language, language. So if they have no other frame of reference, what else is it then for them to expect? Yeah. And so that puts us in a position of wow. The conditioning goes even deeper than the surface. Yeah. You understand? So for you to have that understanding and that tolerance mm -hmm. and then the willingness to be able to say, okay. Welcome. Yeah, I'll be patient with you. Yeah, because you haven't you haven't been yourself for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, true. You know, but but true. imagine though, you you have awareness because of where you were, where you where you lived, mm -hmm. seeing the dungeon and all and yeah. so forth. But these other countries, including Rwanda, Rwanda, they don't know how we got to oh. America. Yeah, they don't know what we've been through mm -hmm. unless it's on a video. Yeah. Um, so it's a little different trying to come to a country mm -hmm. that kind of embraces um, those that enslaved us. Yeah. You know, this country is a country of love and mm -hmm. forgiveness, mm -hmm. and that's beautiful. Yeah. But we're coming from a place of trying to get our freedom. Yeah. So we see things a little differently, mm -hmm. and um, I think that makes it hard, not necessarily for us, because mm -hmm. we're used to it, yeah. but it might make it hard for them to understand us, okay. because we come, we have a certain level of, of um, mannerisms about ourselves, mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. certain amount of, uh, level of even aggression, I heard, yeah. Yeah. or <laughs> assertiveness, <laughs> or, um, you know, we... We at this point we don't come to play. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're not we're not passive people. Yeah. If we actually made it here, no no expat that actually made it out of out of America yeah. or out of any of these European countries mm -hmm. is a passive person. Yeah. They fighters. So we come over here and we still have that mindset. Um, sorry, we have an event tonight, so it's yeah. gonna be. A the people coming through, yeah, all right. but we still have that mindset that we have to fight for everything. Fight for everything yeah. Where these people are more peaceful, they're like um, they're more of yeah, you know relaxed. Relaxed people, yeah. And and so we're trying to motivate them. Come on, let's go. Yeah, let's yeah, let's get do it. Let's this. Do let's it. do it. Right. They right. don't see that. They don't. Well, they see it, but they don't understand, understand. why we're like this. But at the um, same, and you know, with that though, because she and I we talk about that, <clears throat> and. It becomes a, uh, uh, another realization that you know we've been under a certain uh, system to where, when it relates to time, there's a level of constraint. Yeah. Whereas, and it's a certain understanding that goes along with it, but you know, to understand that those who put us under that, they only have a certain limit of time. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I got you. Whereas we being the original people, mm -hmm. we're not under that constraint because. Mm -hmm. To trace us to the beginning, you'll be looking for a very long time because yeah. there is no beginning to us. There's no end to mm -hmm. us. So when you're in the, and you're in your original state, speaking your original language, your original culture, you know you can be you. You can be you, yeah. And so the time factor is not uh, is almost like a non-issue in a sense, not in a negative way, but to understanding that I've been here, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be here, yeah. and so. What's the pressure? What's the rush? What's the hurry? Mm -hmm, so forth mm -hmm, and so on. Mm -hmm. Although it, there's a requirement in certain things that you need to have a regimen of time. Mm -hmm. But so those are again those things that you know in the cultural differences that yeah. we, have to, we have to deal with. Yeah. I mean, working with diaspora, me myself, sometimes I get myself wanting mm -hmm. because of how you do your things and how we do our things. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody will call you, call do this for me, and they expect a certain time for you to work with right. but our system is so relaxed exactly. and he tries that's crazy <laughs> <laughs> he tries that's he's crazy. so relaxed like yo I would do it I would definitely do it but sure. we don't add that you know time frame to right. it but day in day out 
with the introduction of the for the diaspora, yes. I think we are all learning. Sure. Because, um, you know, I was talking to him. He said, 4 o'clock, we're supposed to be here. And then he said, maybe we can come like 4, 10, 4, 20. And do you know what I He's told London. him? <laughs> <laughs> and then, and, and you know what I told I was like, yo, do you know what? I've been moving around with diasporas. Their time is their time. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yo, let's, let's do this. Let's. So I think bit by bit, we are learning yeah, from we'll each learn from other. other. That, that doesn't mean what we do things is wrong or what you right, do is wrong. Right, we are right. trying to adjust mm -hmm. to each other. Sure. Beautiful. So now my other thing is, the, how was the repatriation like for you? The preparation, the mindset, your friends, the family, how was it like? To move, to finally say, yo. When we decided to move, it was, it was almost an immediate decision. Yeah. Okay. We, yeah. we, they just killed another one of our, our brothers. Mm -hmm. And which was this one, the Atlanta, this was before the Atlanta one. It was just, they took another one of our lives. Uh, we were on lock, we were in COVID, kind of like a semi lockdown. Mm -hmm. um, our businesses folded because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And there was back-to-back -back police killing within two weeks. And then I hit that point, I was like, it, I'm just looking at all the people. <laughs> but it hit that point, I was like, let's go. Okay. Why are we still here? Mm -hmm. We've been researching it and toying around with the idea, like I yeah. said, for over a whole year. Okay. Um, we, we really totally was focused on Ghana, and then we stopped mm -hmm. at one point. And in my mind, we just stopped looking at Africa altogether. But then when that hit, it was like the God was telling us, now's the time. Now's the time. So, um, provisions within 90 days, we, so we decided that it had to be about November. November. And I was like, okay, I knew how to get them. I said, <laughs> let's go for my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> and he was, say no to the birthday situation. <laughs> and, um, and that was November. We went for a week in Tanzania and okay. then a week here. We came here to find a place. Mm -hmm. We've been watching other YouTubers mm -hmm. since we decided in November to come. Total following YouTubers journey in mm -hmm. Rwanda for like the next two months. Wow. Every day, all yeah. day. Just documenting, yeah. writing everything, everything they said, yeah. writing all the notes, taking notes. Mm -hmm. Everything they said was like our Bible. Okay. I mean, I have a book that yeah. had like 20 yeah. pages filled out mm -hmm. from how to do it at the RDB, how to take the airport, how to yeah. quarantine, how yeah. to do this and do that. All of that. Quick trip. Okay. And when we came, we went and looked for a house. We found our house. Um, we met a couple of people out here, a couple of friends. Mm -hmm. We went home and started packing. Okay. Immediately. <laughs> Literally. Just like that. Literally. Brother. Literally. Literally. Wow. We right. packed, mm -hmm. sold everything we had, and within, so that was January, within 90 days, we were out. We were gone. Well, yes, absolutely. Yep. Welcome.